Welcome back to the channel. Today I present to you my review after 100 miles in the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. My name is Ed Bird and I'm a non-leap runner. I'm currently training for a sub 1 hour 30 attempt at the half marathon distance at the Immortal Sport Salisbury Half Marathon. I've been using these shoes for a range of different training activities over the last four weeks from longer 9 to 12 mile runs at around the 7 minutes 30 per mile pace to interval training of around about 400 to 500 meters at 5k pace, fartlek sessions of around about 7 miles in distance and some easier recovery type runs at shorter distances and lower paces. So firstly, the comfort level of these shoes is really something to behold. I have heard from other runners that have told me that these shoes really do feel a lot more rigid than some of the other Hoka models from past and present. They also say that they're somewhat less cushioned as well, but for me, that's not really been an issue. I find them soft enough for any run, really. I think that Profly X foam in the midsole here really is fantastic. I've really, really enjoyed racking up 100 miles in these shoes. I find that the midsole foam is rigid enough to provide that propulsion needed for those kind of interval runs where you're picking up the pace, but also cushioned enough to give a bit of a break to the underside of your foot. I mean like a break as in making it easy for it, not breaking it. You can really pick up the pace in this shoe. You don't feel as if you're going to turn your ankle in any way. There's lots of kind of support there around the ankle, around the forefoot area, that top of your foot. It really is a great fitting shoe and certainly has a great feel. I found that the upper on this shoe is again a real winner. It's very light, it's thin, it's breathable, but it doesn't feel like it's going to tear or rip. In my first few runs in the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, you do really feel that the material just could tear or rip. It, it probably isn't, but you do get that feeling that that could occur. You certainly don't get that in this. The shoe just kind of disappears and it lets you run without any fear. The upper shows absolutely no degradation whatsoever, apart from a very strange red kind of outline around certain areas of the upper where some of the glue or adhesive has been used. It's really strange. Um, if anyone else has sort of found that on their Hoka Carbon Xs, please let me know. It's just really weird. I could try and show you on camera, but I just don't think it's going to pick it up. Aside from that, the upper is holding up brilliantly after 100 miles. I've had zero issues at all in terms of fit, comfort, and also lacing really on this shoe. They really are a dream in that respect. They're light, and in comparison to the Zoomfly 3, there's only one winner. On longer runs of nine to 13 miles, this shoe really enabled me to get into almost like a trance-like state. The slope of the outsole here just enables you as the runner to aim for this kind of midfoot area and just sort of tee off. It's really, really hard to explain. Certainly as somebody who's never run in Hoka's before, I don't know if that's a kind of common thing, but it really does just enable you to forget about running. You're just kind of landing on that midfoot area and then just rolling off. I don't think you have the same real feeling of propulsion with this shoe as you get with something like the 4% or perhaps the next percent. But then again, we're dealing with a vastly different heel to toe drop in the Carbon X. I would state that this shoe is far, far more stable than the Vaporfly 4% and the next percent. It's far less narrow in the outsole here. It feels more supportive in the heel area, certainly in the arch area, and I would also say in the forefoot. There's just a bit more surface area there and a kind of target to aim for. The next percent being that bit more supportive than the 4% in terms of heel support, that arch support, and in terms of forefoot too. I would suggest that the Carbon X is kind of a middle ground in terms of pace, stability, and comfort. It kind of fits in between those shoes in a perfect kind of position for me. I know a lot of runners, certainly a lot of viewers of the channel have found Nike's Vaporfly series very, very narrow in the arch. Cornering can become very precarious in those shoes. Although many of you choose to take on that risk in favor of having higher possible pace. I think perhaps the Carbon X does demand more effort from the runner to get up to those higher paces in comparison to something like the 4% or next percent. But I think it's far more stable 
and forgiving than those two aforementioned shoes. There's far less chance of you turning an ankle on twisty courses with sharp bends. Could this shoe outpace the 4% and the next percent? I would suggest probably no, but certainly I have found it durable thus far and at 80 pounds less than the next percent. It certainly needs to be a shoe that is considered for half marathon and marathon races. And that's not even considering training. This is a great training shoe also. In terms of outsole and midsole wear, I am seeing some roughing around about the midfoot point and also towards the back of the shoe and the heel area on the outer side. I find all of that unsurprising really considering the tough and varied training that I've been putting this shoe through. As Billy Ocean says, when the tough get going, the outsole wears down a bit. That's what he said, right? The midsole feels good at this point after 100 miles, still somewhat rigid, but I can confirm to you, good friends and buddies, that it does start to mellow out somewhat at around about 30 miles. It now has a salted caramel hot cookie kind of feel, like when the chocolate pieces inside the cookie start to melt very slightly, but the other parts of the cookie remain crisp. Anyway, consistent wear across the outsole and plenty of life left in this old dog. It's not a dog, it's a shoe. Anyway, it still feels good. Obviously the Vaporfly 4% is a comparable price to the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. There's really not much in it weight wise. I think you will feel more propulsion from the 4%, but certainly at greater risk of turning that ankle with the lack of support in that shoe. It's a narrow shoe. You really have to spend some time with the 4% to improve that form. This is a bit more forgiving in terms of running form. That's not to say that the Carbon X is not a fast shoe. Don't get me wrong. On a recent interval repeats type run, 10 by 400 meters, I managed to creep up towards six minutes per mile pace, which for me is getting towards my peak kind of speed. Imagine a giraffe running very quickly, tall person. Yeah, so that's kind of getting towards top speed for me. Outstanding. Certainly within that session, the very last rep was perhaps the fastest of all, which as you well know from you guys doing reps, that, that doesn't happen very often. The last one's the normally the one where you just want to collapse. Certainly the legs always feel good the next day after we're in the Carbon X. The foam does seem to provide a decent amount of cushioning and legs always feel pretty good. Not too much recovery time is really needed after using the Carbon X. Perhaps not as fresh as after using the Vaporfly 4% and Next% percent with that Zoom X material. Certainly I'm pleased that I went true to size with this model. I've had no issues in terms of fit and feel sizing to go true to size. Better still, test it out for yourself just to be on the safe side. So, in summary, do I recommend this shoe? I'm a fellow that tends to want to try out a range of tools for a task and being very lucky to own a menagerie of different running shoes, I can heartily say yes, I do recommend the Carbon X. It's a winner in terms of fit, for comfort and also for pace. It's a very able alternative to the 4% or the next percent. It's certainly been durable thus far and a slightly more attractive price, 20 pounds less than the Vaporfly 4%. It's great for all different training activities. I mean, you could get this shoe and just use it for all of your runs, I guess, if you wanted to. It might be a little bit rigid and perhaps lack a little bit of cushioning for those easy day recovery type runs. But for everything else, it can handle it. You could certainly race in this for 10K, half marathon, marathon distances. It really is a very versatile shoe and a very beautiful shoe, might I add. So please stay tuned for more updates, reviews and comparisons of the Carbon X versus some other stuff. Please like, comment and subscribe. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.